Brown again, and I'm going to be doing a class today on chalk painting. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I've been doing a lot of chalking since the weather's been nice outside, and I was thinking, well, what can I do with my leftover chalk pieces? And I know a lot of other people, especially now that it was just Easter, might have some leftover chalk pieces, so... I thought, well, we can make some paint out of them, and we could also make a sunset picture out of that on watercolor paper. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to get our chalk out. The chalk that I have, I got a couple different kinds, just to show examples of the different colors. This kind, the Crayola, these are pretty bright colors, so they're going to make your colors a lot brighter. And then I also have some leftover sidewalk chalk that are thicker. And those are like these ones. So you've got like the basic colors, the blue, the orange, the green, but these colors are a lot lighter. But once you mix them with water, then they become a little more uh, bright and they have more color to them. So, to get your pieces ready first, you're going to need a hammer, and you're going to need your chalk. It's good to put out a towel down on your table if you do this on your table. Also might be best to do it on your floor. And you'll need paper towels. So, I'm just going to do some examples for them, and then I've already got some colors mixed up that I'll share with you. So for an example, we'll just go ahead and do this red chalk. And you'll take the paper towel and set it in there. And then fold the paper towel over top so that it doesn't go everywhere when you hammer it. And you don't need to hammer it really hard. You just need to bang it a little bit all over. And be careful of your fingers. You don't want to hammer your fingers off because that would not be good. And then once you'd hammer it down and it's down into a powder form, you'll get plastic cups. And you'll want to have a cup for each color that you do. So you'll get a plastic cup and you'll fill it with water to about here. So I've got my extra water right here. Pour that in. And then you'll take your chalk. It's easier if you hold it like a hot dog style. And then you dump it in. And you'll want to have a brush handy so you can mix it all together. And the water will also break down the chalk clumps. So you'll just mix that in. And it's okay if the chunks don't all go away at first. And this is what it will look like inside. And then for the bigger pieces, I'll do an example of one of those for you too, so you can see how we crush it up. So I'm just going to do a little piece of yellow, it's like a very pale yellow. So we'll fold the tablecloth. you've done that then you'll get your cup out and get your water out too pour in just a little bit of water about the same amount and it's about the same amount because I just did a little piece of chalk in here if it was a bigger piece of chalk that you crushed up you'd want more water for that so go ahead and see yep 
we'll hot dog it into the water. And then stir that up. a really pretty yellow and I'll show you the other colors that I made we did orange and this was the sidewalk chalk blue so it's a really light pretty blue and then this was the teacher chalk and it was a darker blue and then we did a really pretty green one And then there's a pretty red one. And let's see, what else am I missing? And there's a real pretty pink one too. And a purple, of course. All right, so now we got all our colors out. So now you'll want to get a piece of watercolor paper. And the water paper is good because it's thicker. If you just try to use regular computer paper, unless it's cardstock, it's going to tear when you're painting on it. And you can find this kind of watercolor paper at Joanne Fabrics or sometimes if you're lucky, Walmart. They also sell watercolor paper that you can find um, at Walmart and at um, Dollar General and sometimes Family Dollar. And you can order it online too. So I've got a piece of paper and we're going to start off because we're doing a sunset. We're going to start off with the sun part first. So we're going to start with the sun right here. So we're going to use the yellow first. Find my yellow. And I'm using this size of a brush. It's a good size, especially if you're making brush strokes and with the sunset. So mix the yellow up real good. And then you'll start by making a circle down at the bottom. And you'll want to keep dipping your brush into the chalk too just so you can make sure that you get that bright color out of it. So we're doing half a circle at the bottom of the paper. And then once you've done the yellow, you're gonna get out the orange that you have. Make sure it's mixed up real nice. And we're just gonna go around the outside of the sun. And that kind of just gives it a little glow on the sun. We'll bring it in a little bit too. All right. There we go. So then it's gradually going from the yellow to the darker orange and it blends a little bit too. And usually with the sunset, you have all the pretty pinks and purples down here, and then it gets a little bit darker into the night sky. So we're going to jump on up to the top part now. Let this part dry just a little bit. We're going to start off with your darkest blue chocolate you have. And go up to the top part. Start from one end and just go all the way over. And you'll go back and forth on that. You'll probably go down about two inches with that. And then once you're down about the two inches, then you'll get a little more playful with it. Just kind of go every other inch on the paper. And some of the lines you can make thicker 
and some of them you can make thinner working on the sky. And I would take the dark down to about half the paper. All right. And then we're gonna get the lighter blue. We're gonna fill in the lighter blue where the darker blue is. Gonna kind of play in there a little bit. Go back and forth. And I would still leave a little bit of white showing in there. Next color we're gonna use is the purple. And the purple, you're gonna go in between on your white spots in the sky. So if there's still a white line in there, you can put a little bit of purple in there. Because the sunset, once it gets into the blues, it gets a little bit of purple in there too. It just looks really pretty. All right. Now we're going to use a little bit of the pink. We have. We're going to start getting a little bit closer to the sun. So you're going to go all the way across with the pink, just an inch above the sun. And then just make some playful marks around that. And you'll want some of them going up into the blue and on top of the blue, but only about an inch or two into the darker colors because the lighter colors eventually fade just into the dark. And then you can take that pink and you can also outline the sun again. It makes it more of like a fluorescent, almost like a beach sunset. Okay. All right. And then we're gonna get out the orange again. Rinse my brush off. Get out the orange. So I'm going to go in with the orange a little bit in between the pinks. And I've got a couple oranges. This orange is the lighter orange that I have. And with orange, you can do a little bit of dabs in between. Use a little bit of yellow in the thought. You'll just go into where the oranges are with a little bit of yellow. And you can kind of bring those right up to the sun. And the sun is going to run a little bit, but that's okay because it's just looking like a flowy sunset. And you can take the yellow and go a little bit in the middle of the sun again. And then we're going to go back to the light blue and we're going to go down here into the sunset a little bit. Just to give it a little touch of blue so then it's fading into the dark. And some of your colors are going to run together. But that's how a sunset looks. And 
if you want to get a little bit more playful, what you can do is you can do some drips on top of it with different colors. I really like to do drips in a lot of my work. Rinse my brush off, and I'm gonna do a little bit of drips of pink on there too. Let's see, where is my pink? Here we go. I'm gonna do some drops of pink in there. drops of the darker blue up top so it gets a little bit darker on the top and if a little bit of the chunks of the chalk come out on the paper that's okay because when it dries you can just wipe it right off or you can just wipe it right off with your brush of the yellow on top of the sun so that's a little bit brighter. Make sure it's stirred up real bit first. Just gonna do a little bit. There we go. And by pouring that under there, then the water is just going out and spreading out. So the sunset's growing. Then it kind of takes on a little bit of a mind of its own. And also, you can use salt. When you put salt onto the picture, it adds a whole other element. It crystallizes and spreads out. It looks really cool. So I like to add some salt sometimes to things. Um, you can use regular salt. I happen to just have mixed up salt seasoning, <laughs> but regular salt works fine with that. So if you want to add another effect to it, just put on the salt. And then you'll see it crystallizes it. It does a couple different things. And you can always add a little bit more blue too. If you want to get playful, if you like the pouring right on there with the sunset, right on the sun, you can take the blue and go up to the top and pour that across, and that will really make it look like it gets darker into the night. And add a little bit of water on top of that because that got a little chunky. And then you can brush off the clumps after, or you might even like that effect and you can leave the clumps on there, have a little 3D effect. If you do that and you want the clumps to stay, wait until it's completely dry and then you can get a clear coat spray. You can find that in the spray paint aisle and you can do a, a spray of clear coat on top of it to hold it all into place. And you wanna do a couple coats of that. And it would just be a clear coat spray a clear coat spray enamel. Just get playful in there a little bit and go across the sun there. All right. So that is how you do a painting with chalk. And with your leftover cups that you have, that you've leftover chalk, what you can do is you can get the paint brushes out. You might want to get an old paint brush and have the kids go paint on, on the sidewalk with it or even adults. You can get a little more detailed in with painting with a brush and do all kinds of cool designs and see how it turns out. Well, thank you so much for having me do this class and for painting with me. Thank you to the Muskingum County Library System 
for having me. I really appreciate it, and I hope that you all have a wonderful day and stay safe. Thank you.